lost our jobs uh, due to the financial crisis. So, uh, so yeah. So when I decided to come to Norway, I, I brought the uh, concept along with me, and of course we put uh, an interesting element into it, which is technology. And um, so this was our humble beginnings. And what we are all about is a platform. It's not just somewhere where you just come and listen to some boring conversation or, 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 or a presentation on stage. It's a platform, it's an, it's an interactive group where we discuss challenges right now that's out there in the market, where we discuss what type of technology that's disrupting the industries, the societies, our lives, so on and so forth. We learn, we immerse ourselves, we experience the latest technology that's out there. And of course, um, yeah, there's a lot of other stuff that we talk about, such as compliance, regulatory stuff, which is kind of boring, but then, you know, GDPR, we have no choice. We have to stick to these type of things. And um, apart from uh, this, there's always uh, the opportunity for you to network, to meet each other. There's a lot of amazing people here, and uh, is there anyone who's kind of boring and saying like, please don't talk to me, leave me alone. Okay, so everyone is interesting, open for a conversation, cool. Um, so there's a lot of interesting things which have come out of Media Monday, something uh, I'll be talking about a little bit later. And what, uh, of course, say it could be someone who's looking to be employed, it's an amazing opportunity for you to get to know um, potential employer or the other way around, the potential employee. If you're looking for funding for your, for your business, uh, if you're looking for large organization, corporations to support your little startup to, to take it to the next level, like we're doing today with Soprasteria, we have scale-up programs. So this is literally giving you access to multi-million dollar organizations and, and business opportunities. So uh, I can go on and on, but then I don't want to take too much time because the gentleman from uh, Socrates area, he needs to get going. Um, so, um, so as we um, progress, I would um, request you to, of course, uh, please send us your questions, if there's anything. Uh, we're going to log it on so that we do not have to stop and pause and answer it. So we have all your questions at once and we can, at once and we can uh, just uh, get cracking with it. So here's something that we're going to be talking about, the abundance of technology, because today everyone walks with a very powerful device in your pocket and you know literally about 10% of what it can actually do and you use about 10% of that 10% most of the time to take selfies and watch some videos. So we're trying to put, it, put, put into perspective what type of technology that we have in 2019 and bring most people who are still living in 1919 to 2019 and show them the world that we live in and the opportunities that we have around us. And, uh, and, and one of the examples for that is NVIDIA, who's doing some amazing work, who's literally accelerating the pace of technology into the stratosphere. But we see a lot of organizations still not understanding the, the capability of this technology. Here are our speakers, and uh, well, the, not any specific orders, the order, but uh, of course to kick things off, as I mentioned, we'll be having uh, Jon, uh, Jon, Jon, Johan uh, from uh, Sofrasteria. He's replacing Tobias, who is unfortunately not able to be with us. So, um, and to sort of run through the itinerary, as you see, the doors kind of opened uh, at 5.30, but due to the security situation, uh, nobody could get in. Um, yeah, and then, uh, then we just had to flip things around. So Microsoft invites every one of you during the better break to come experience their HoloLens. Uh, is there anyone here who's not experienced HoloLens? Whoa, there's a lot. There's a lot of people. This is the future of computing. So. Thank you, brother. You have two as well. Okay, so. Well, you can experience one and two. You make a choice, right? But it, it, it's, it's more or less, obviously, it's, it's a bit pricey. So, not all of you are going to be owning a HoloLens at this particular moment, but most definitely you're going to be working with technology like HoloLens at work. It could be from engineering, graphic designing, building buildings, 
and they, the application is, is, is unlimited. It's, it's literally a computer that you wear and, and literally you see through. So, as I mentioned, this is not just about the presentations here. It is about going and checking out these immersive technologies and, 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 and inspire yourself and tell us how would you, what do you think that you can do with this technology? Because we'd love to hear what, how you perceive this technology, how, how it can help you with your daily, day-to-day -day life, either personally or at work and so on and so forth. So without uh, ado, I will bring Johan on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, Johan from uh, Super Sailor. Thank you for being Thank you. Uh, I'm here as a stand in for Tobias, and I don't know whether you did you show a picture of Tobias. I do apologize. I'm not as good looking as him. So you have to take me uh, today. And we're going to talk about Soccer Stereo Scale and how we can use all these technologies that you're going to be presented here today and how we can collaborate and create good solutions around it. Because at the end of the day, it's new technology. It's hard to find the use cases. It's hard to find the clients to want to use it. So Sopra Stereo Scala is all about connecting the dots, connecting the clients with solutions and partners. And if you don't find my presentation, that's fine. I can just go on talking for a while. Uh, I don't know, has any one of you heard of Soprasteria? Of course. A few. Uh, we are one of those big corporates. Uh, we are a huge European consultants agency. Uh, 45,000 people uh, employed around the world. And we have a turnover of many, many billion euros. We have the big clients in Europe. We have the big accounts in Europe. And we are working on the big projects in Europe. And we made a realization is that we are not able to deliver everything ourselves. We have to build networks, we have to build ecosystems, and we have to collaborate to deliver value for our clients. And that's why Software Stereo Scale Up has been set up as a part of Software Stereo's offering in the market, where we are working together with our clients, with partners, and to see if we can solve some of the problems and challenges that our clients have that we are not able to do ourselves. We can do it faster, we can do it better, and we can give our clients something that they wouldn't have found and have the capability of doing themselves. Because we see that when we are working with large clients around Europe, they have a completely different vocabulary than startup companies small companies who've got brilliant solutions, but they don't have the vocabulary to talk to the big companies. So companies like us can be in the middle, facilitating the spaces and the arenas where they can meet and collaborate and make those uh, solutions together. And that's what Soprasteria Scale Up is all about. It's about bringing small, good solutions into the marketplace where they can meet our clients. And for us, when we are doing this, it's not about everyone coming in. We know our clients, we know the pains of our clients, and we also know... There you are. Not... Now I probably have to skip a bit. Uh... We can start there. Because for us, it's an, the innovation that is happening in Norway is happening in, somewhere else in Europe. It's all connected. And we have clients in all the countries around Europe. And we're going to be the door opener for our clients to new solutions. Oops. And we're going to be creating a network throughout Europe. So if there's anyone here today with a brilliant solution, brilliant idea that could match some of the challenges, some of the solutions that and customers we are working with, there is a, a URL at the last slide of this presentation that we can use. Uh, 
So we're going to make collaboration easier for everyone by making a place for new technologies, new markets, clients and partners to meet and create value. So where we start is also engaging our clients, engaging the startup community. And we, Tobias, who should have been here today, he's been working now in the communities in the Nordic area to build uh, a set of companies working with us. And we are trying to get our clients up with a specific challenge at our website. Um, you can apply to that challenge and then we do a selection of startups who can work with us. And we also see that when the selected startup has been uh, inserted into the project, you'll not be working there alone. You will be an integrated part of our ongoing projects with our clients. You will be a part of the Soprasteria team working with the client. And then we see that by doing so, we, it's a much easier way to integrate new solutions by being a part of an already existing uh, uh, ecosystem. And when we see that we are collaborating and, and bringing to the table four companies, is a place to be, clients and proximity to clients. We have the technology knowledge, we have the partnership with all the big, huge corporation like the one back in the corner there. Uh, we've got a very good collaboration with them, giving access to technology, access to possibilities that a company of our size has the ability to create. We will give every company that's uh, working with us the opportunity to guinea pig uh, with us into a group. And here are some of the companies that we've already worked with. We are constantly building this, we are constantly working with clients in a new way. And we say that you, you, know, you have to think big, but you have to start small. And you need to scale it from there. So, SocrosteriaScaleUp.com, that's the website to go and get more information about our system and how to work with us. And in there you will also find new challenges posted by our clients that they need help to solve. New challenges will be posted there regularly. So please take a picture of that screen because that's actually the most important URL uh, from what I've said today. So we hope you're going to enjoy the evening and you will have a lot of exciting presentation for exciting companies. And uh, to answer your question about HoloLens 102, it's the number one in the back. So, <laughs> Enjoy and I hope you have a good evening. This guy is pretty tall. <laughs> See, this is a proper scale up, you know what I'm saying. Um, well, anyway, before. Uh, yeah, let's just jump into the next presentation. It's Jamie, uh, who's come all the way from the United Kingdom, and of course, um, really excited to present to you the latest development with NVIDIA. Yes, Jamie? Oh. I feel like a stand up comedian stopping my set. Moving that over there. Excellent. Right, everyone. Right. I mean, can everyone hear me at the back? No. Okay, then I need this. Um, my name's Jamie. I'm from Nvidia. I'm based in the UK, but I work all over the Nordic countries. Uh, my focus is on enterprise solutions, which I understand is a very broad thing. Um, but a lot of people might not know. NVIDIA for enterprise solutions. So I wanted to start by talking a little bit about who NVIDIA are today. Um, many people will know us for the gaming industry, where an industry we've been working in since we were founded in 1993, uh, when we invented the GPU, the general, the graphical processing unit, um, and program programmable shaders, and all the things that make the incredible gaming si um, systems like the one over here run to the fidelity and the resolution that we expect. 
What that also led into for us was the graphics industry, content creators, visual effects, uh, architectural design. And we now power vast swathes of that industry as well. Every single VFX Oscar nominee and winner in the last 10 years has been powered by NVIDIA GPUs, which we're quite proud about. Where people start to think, really, NVIDIA, is in the data center and in autonomous vehicles and robotics. Now, these are some of the main areas for our growth at the minute. A few years ago, we started developing products that would go into creating the now the world's fastest and largest supercomputers, hyperscale computing and infancy, um, which we install by the thousand in many of the world's fastest computers that are on the planet today, solving the hardest equations and problems that humanity face. Autonomous vehicles, from public transport through to shipping, boats, autonomous drones, is an area where we've been talking about for a long time now. You see it in the news a lot, but we are really doing this and we're driving cars now for thousands and thousands of miles with no human intervention. We're doing that by training the artificial intelligence in our own data centers and working with over 300 of the world's leading automotive companies to bring autonomous transport to reality. The common theme with all of these industries is the NVIDIA GPUs. The graphics cards that you put in your computer today is the same underlying technology that you see in our autonomous vehicle efforts and in the data centers. The important thing about NVIDIA's technology for hardware is that we don't create individual products for different industries for the most part. Our hardware systems are applied broadly across many, many industries. And I want to give you a little insight into some of the amazing work that some of our customers are doing with this technology today with a short video. I am AI. Accelerating your discoveries to solve the great challenges of our time. Um, one of the questions that we get asked a lot is why 
is this technology accelerating all these things now? And the thing that I think a lot of people have been used to is CPU based servers and workstations doing grunt work in computing for a long, long time. And for many, many years this worked. However, in the last 10 years, the increase in performance of traditional computing has tailed off massively. The blue line here represents CPU performance, and I'm sorry if there's anyone from Intel or AMD in the house. Um, but the key thing here is the performance of GPU computing has risen and continues to rise year on year, far outstripping the power that we can now get out of CPU computing. And I don't really like reading straight off slides, but GPU computing is the most pervasive and accessible way to accelerate computing today at any scale. We power the world's fastest notebooks, workstations, supercomputers, and cloud platforms with the same hardware from end to end. And that's the key point. You're not using something different to the guys at Facebook, Google, Amazon, Apple, Baidu, all the major corporations in the world. The same technology is in your laptop, in your workstation, and you can do the same work with it. So as far as the great minds that we work with, many, many industries are now looking to us for our supercomputing capabilities, for our data science acceleration. And there's 15 key industries that we now work in, far outside of our humble beginnings creating 3D graphics for games. So in the media entertainment industry, for example, where we look at the applications for things like video editing, content design, virtual reality, and AR. What we do in this industry and every other is look at the applications and the problems that you have and see if we can accelerate them and make them faster. It, we call it domain-based acceleration. We create a hardware platform that can make nearly anything faster in an accelerated computing space, and then we ask the, an industry and say, well, what are your applications that you use? And then we work with those software developers to make them faster. We work with healthcare professionals to make MRI scans accessible, to save time for radiologists and eventually save them more lives. We work in life sciences to help with drug discovery and accelerate the next generation of pharmaceuticals. We work in travel and transportation to enhance things like Google Maps, Apple Maps. The AR and, A the AR and AI applications within those technologies are really unbounded. So the key thing for us is we reach out to every single industry that feels like it needs acceleration and work with you to make sure that your applications and your platforms are accelerated. Oh. Forwards. So I don't want to get too technical today, but I want to really get across the point that the way we do this is not by creating different hardware products for everyone. The important thing that underlines all of the work we do is our CUDA development ecosystem. Now, this is the programming that goes into applications and frameworks and systems to leverage the processing power of NVIDIA hardware. So whether you want to look at existing applications, we have a whole library of thousands and thousands of applications that are immediately accelerated 10, 20, 30, 100 times over what they would do without parallel GPU processing. Going more technical from that, we have domain specialist frameworks for artificial intelligence, machine learning, and deep learning that are designed with NVIDIA research to be as fast as they possibly can based on whatever hardware you have inside your computer, your supercomputer, your data center. We work with programming libraries to create specific technology stacks for individual problems within industries. So whether you need to create a deep neural network for training an autonomous vehicle, or you need the most accurate physics simulation of waves in a game engine or an architectural design, we have software libraries for that. We also work with standards bodies to make sure that any of the programming and software development that we do can be used by the open source community. We work with OpenAEC, the C++ community, all of our, nearly all of our software development work goes on GitHub and is accessible. And in the most complex side of it, we work with existing programming languages to accelerate them without creating new languages. So you may be familiar with things like C++, Fortran, and Python. We just add CUDA programming to them instead of creating new languages that developers need to go and learn. Therefore, the application of GPU accelerated computing is much, much easier 
the need to learn a whole new development language. So no matter how complex your organization may be, you can either look at existing applications that you use and whether they can be accelerated, or you can create brand new applications with languages of the, that your developers will be familiar with. So how do we identify whether your businesses, your startups, can find opportunity in these areas? Well, there's three main areas that I look at when I speak to customers. Do you have data? Do you have lots of data? Do you have some data? Do you have data going through your business that you just throw away because you don't think it's important? Well, if you have data, then there's value in that data, no matter what that data is. So then we look at what can we apply to that data to add value and increase the speed of your business. Do you need an AI model to tell you what's coming next based on previous information? Do you need a machine learning model to visualize data that you already know a lot about? Or do you need to look at, as I mentioned earlier, existing applications or create a new application that will really help your business grow? When we look at those three data points, we can really quickly understand whether GPU accelerated computing or any accelerated computing platform is going to accelerate the work that you do. So I'd like to look at a few companies now who have done this and done this really well. And they are interesting companies because they're not the sort of companies that I thought maybe five years ago we'd be talking to. So car sales, car sales are the largest second-hand car market in Australia. Now these guys were dealing with 50,000 images every single day being uploaded to their platform of cars that people wanted to sell. The problem that they had was that these images might not have been the right images, they may not have been accurate, or the information about the cars may, the information about the cars may not have been accurate. I think they got the message. So what they realized is they had this data. They had historical data about these thousands of images of cars, and they knew what the right content was. They knew what the correct images should be. But what they were doing was that there were people sat there going through these images every single day on top of the work that they should have been doing anyway to make sure that all of these entries were correct for every single car being sold on their platform. So they came to us, one of our partners, and said, well, we need something to do this better. So we trained an AI model with them and, and uh, one of our data science partners to recognize what the right images were based on all the historical data of correct images that they had, connected that to the registry database of every single car that's registered in Australia. So every time you upload data now to this system, their model checks it automatically with a 97% accuracy. Now, if I told you that, sold, that saved them 10 seconds per image per day, that doesn't sound very much. But if they have those tens of thousands of images, and they have that every single day, what they end up saving is 55 hours of time every single day. Which when you consider there's only 24 hours in a day, it, you start to see the value that they've found. That ended up saving them $500,000 US a year, just based on moving from a manual platform to an automated platform, and their users didn't know the difference. Apart from that the email came from a robot instead of a human, so their images weren't very good. So that's finding data, seeing what they can do with it, creating an application, and saving $500,000 a year. Velosa, I love this company, one of the first people to really look at finding value in content that people didn't know were there. These guys are based in Finland, and I must say the technology innovation that happens across Scandinavia and the Nordics is absolutely amazing. Um, what Velocity did was build AI models to analyze emotion and sentiment and every single piece of detail about video content. Traditionally in the media industry, content owners would only look for what they cared about. If I'm a sports rights owner, I'm only going to analyze a football game to see who's playing, who scores a goal, how long the ball is in and out of play for, which I will then sell to analysts and things like that. What Velocity do is take it to a level deeper and look at the actual human content within video. Now that can be applied so broadly from creating personalized advertising content to security and surveillance concerns. Now, and I don't want to get into the ethics and models of AI and things like that today. I'm happy to talk about it over a bit later because it's a long conversation. Um, but what they found was that it was taking far too long to train their technology on hundreds and thousands of hours of video content. 
by moving to Accelerate to GPU content platform, they moved from training their system in weeks to hours, which meant that if they wanted to train something specifically for a customer who wants a specific information to come out of their content, they can retrain in hours rather than weeks. And the amount of value that brings to their company is immeasurable, really. So the application for that now is incredibly broad and we're seeing more and more and more companies go down this model of analyzing video content because the value in that content is incredibly huge. Bing. Bing were one of the first search engines to come to us and say there's a really clear thread when people search for content on the internet. They normally look for an image or they look for something like what, where can I buy the jeans that so-and-so was wearing in this episode of whatever? And what we realized that searching by image is a much more powerful tool when consumers are looking for content or looking for something to purchase. So Bing were the first people that we work with on mass scale to introduce visual search into a global search engine. And what we found was in order to do this with the speed that consumers expect, the only way is to do inferencing at mass, mass scale. The only way to do that at the speed you require is with the parallel processing of a hyperscale GPU data center. This technology is now being used and introduced into, specifically into augmented reality shopping tools all around the world. You can pick out, get your phone out of your pocket, point it at this gentleman's red jumper in the front and say, where can I buy this jumper? And within milliseconds, not seconds, in milliseconds, that answer comes back to you. The reason that that can happen so quickly is because there are tens of thousands of GPUs running in data centers to process that information and get it back to you that quickly. So we have the data, we know the model we want to apply to it, we build an application, and we're creating value for consumers and customers. Another one I'll talk about, another Scandinavian favorite, are the guys at Ikea. And this was a few years ago now, IKEA realized that they couldn't put every single kitchen in their showrooms, no matter how big they make their showrooms. You still can't have every combination of cabinet and cooker and utensil in that showroom. So they took every single model that they had, because they designed the products themselves, so they have all the 3D models, and they built 3D kitchens, which you can then experience in virtual reality at human scale. And that was the key thing. You couldn't just look down at a picture of a kitchen, something been printed out, you can't experience that. So we put this into entire virtual reality, and now you can create a custom IKEA kitchen very, very easily. This is rolled out into a number of their stores worldwide now. Now the interesting thing about this is you think about how can we then augment that? Because really all we did here was take the data and create an application. We missed that middle bit out. We missed the intelligence. So if you to answer a few questions for someone at IKEA and say, well, I like cooking Asian cuisine, I like dark colors, I like metallic textures. A machine learning algorithm or an AI algorithm could then pick through all of IKEA's content and create kitchens specifically designed for your requirements. And that's the next stage of augmented and virtual reality shopping experiences. Personalizing everything that you want to buy, every option that you could possibly have, specific to your needs. And that's where the intelligence comes in when we've got the data and we've already got an application. So there's some really cool examples of where customers have gone through that three-stage process. We've got data, we apply some intelligence to it, we create an application, and we're either saving money, we're either making more money, or we're creating a great business from the ground up. But inside NVIDIA, we do a lot of this ourselves as well. And I want to show you this quick video of uh, a network we made called Galga. Now you might have seen this on YouTube, it did the rounds uh, a few months ago. But basically we trained a network to take a doodle and create photorealistic images from just that doodle. You create a basic image, give it some examples, I want to see a road, I want to see a river, I want to see some plants, I want to see some sand. Give it a style, time of day, or even uh, to imitate a tea sort of go. And we can create content from literally just that doodle. So creating content, you know, <laughs> stock photo websites are really worried about this. Because if you think of how long people might spend finding that perfect picture of that sunset in exactly the right shape and size to fit in that part of your marketing campaign, you can now just doodle it out, put the sun where you want it, and say, give me that picture, or give me 20 different versions of that picture. 
this is all done just by training a network on probably millions of images of landscapes, of scenery, and then saying, right, give me some graphs, give me some scene. So creating content with AI is a big part of the future of content creation and design. But creating still images is one thing. We really liked the idea and took it a step further. The frames that you see is not rendered by a graphics engine. It's actually rendered by the AI technology that we built. This is the first time we combine machine learning and computer graphics to do image generation using deep networks. For training data, we are given some driving sequences of different cities and then we use another segmentation network to extract the high-level semantics from these uh, sequences. We have the UE4 engine to generate these colorized high-level uh, layout. Different objects were given different colors. The network converts uh, this representation to images. It stops quite abruptly, that one. Um, so with that work, we can create infinite 3D worlds based on absolutely nothing, no input whatsoever. You can just start driving or start walking and the world will just self-generate and keep going. And then you can change the style of the city, you can change the era that that city may be in based on the training data that we put into the network. So the application for that in virtual reality content is huge. People spend hundreds of hours generating environments and cities for virtual reality experiences, which adds a huge amount of cost. Unless you're making a very specific game with a very specific look and feel, then this can save people hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours and a huge amount of money in content creation. But when we combine that with technologies that were built by Holodeck, which is a collaborative virtual reality design platform, the ideas and the opportunities become even bigger. Holodeck was a tool and a platform that we developed specifically for design and architecture, where you could bring in models at human and tabletop scale directly from CAD and 3D applications and have people from all over the world working in the same virtual reality space at the same time. This saves people hundreds and hundreds of hours in design reviews, huge amount of money in travel costs, and the time from idea to delivery is reduced a huge amount. We're now seeing this becoming very pervasive in the entertainment space as well. Multi-site collaborative virtual reality in, for theme parks, for uh, location-based virtual reality, is gonna become the next generation of entertainment services. If any of you get the pleasure to go to Star Wars uh, Disneyland in the next few years, the work that we've done there with ILM and Disney is based around this sort of technology. Um, and it's really fascinating what we're going to achieve with this sort of platform. The next generation of holiday will be a platform called Omniverse, where you can combine and connect hundreds of different applications, including the neural networks that will automatically create content to enable designers, content creators, 3D artists, directors and producers to work collaboratively in a global space in a virtual or augmented reality style. This video keeps going, and I've, I've run out of stuff to say now. It's a very cool thing, though, and I'm, it's very exciting whenever you get to go into a holodeck and see a car being designed uh, in real time. So, switching tracks slightly, you know, if any of the stuff that I've talked about today sounds incredibly interesting to you, but you might not be at the stage yet where you want to invest in the computing power that's required or the developers or the insight required. Something that, I know mean, this looks very small to people at the back especially, but the point here is that we have a whole program in NVIDIA called Inception. The Inception program is designed at accelerating startups who are specifically working in the deep learning and machine learning space. So whatever idea you might have, you might be thinking about for your business now, there is more than likely a startup somewhere in the world that we can connect you to who will be more than happy to talk to you and work with you about your ideas. And if there isn't one that we don't know about, then you should probably start a company to do that idea because it's probably a good one. So, whether you want to look at 8 billion tweets a minute 
and visualize it in real time. This GIF isn't quite playing in real time, but honestly it does still in real time. Um, with platforms like the one we built with our friends at MapD, where you can analyze every single social media feed in real time for brand content awareness, for security, for sentiment analysis. We can help with that sort of platform. Or whether you want to build an amazing immersive virtual reality experience to connect people from all over the world, connect your customers together, connect your users and your workforce together, we can help with that idea as well. Or whether you just want to create the most groundbreaking, incredible looking graphics content for your marketing delivery, for your content creation, we can help power that as well. If any of these things are of interest to you, then please take an note of my email address or have a chat with me afterwards. We're more than happy to help. Thank you very much. Uh, we started back in 2016, uh, we were one of the first events in uh, Norway to, to start speaking about AI uh, to a more mainstream audience, not, not to a very tech-oriented audience, uh, because uh, Media Monday is not it's a tech event, that's okay, but, but it's not exactly targeted towards the tech people, it's targeted more towards people who are on a commercial level who are looking at what the technology can do for their business and their lives and so on and so forth. Uh, so, of course, as you uh, saw from what uh, Jamie spoke about, uh, this, was where we, 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 this is where AI is heading, especially when you look at creating content and so on and so forth. So this was one of the events we did back in 2016 with IBM. Uh, it was, it was a, pretty, a bit of a breakthrough event for us when we started speaking about how AI helps uh, the uh, CRM system and marketing and so on and so forth. And moving from there, of course, we... Uh, is this click? Okay. And um, so, it, well, basically sort of following up on what uh, Jamie was talking about, uh, this is all about how you put together the power of big data, combine it together with artificial intelligence and things uh, such as um, RPA uh, and uh, NLP, Natural Language Processing and of course create some amazing uh, content. As of now, organizations such as like the Washington Post and the Associated Press are using this type of technology to create their content. And um, what really inspired me to sort of, you know, come up with this specific event or or I say that's not fair, but my team, is that uh, when we started looking into the fact that how much AI has actually come into play when it comes to creating and generating content. And um, just to give you a couple of examples, of course, as I said, there's so much information here in this particular event uh, that we do not have enough time to cram into a Monday evening. So uh, here are some, some, some of the uh, solutions that you can find and uh, basically sort of uh, help your organization uh, integrate AI into your content creation, of course, to improve the marketing efforts and ROI and so on and so forth. And a bit of interesting information that I came across here was that 61%, as you can see here, of millennials actually believe that AI is being used, just like Jamie mentioned, to create content and 60% actually trust this particular solution. So um, here's, here's something a bit interesting for you uh, to just look into. These are a couple of uh, solutions which are out there which you can really use to generate AI and once you start using it, you, you'll be amazed. I mean, of course, uh, Jamie showed us how the, uh, the visual parts work, how powerful AI is to actually create visuals, but once you start going into these uh, specific uh, uh, programs such as uh, Simple Show, uh, especially Lumen, where you basically give it a couple of keywords and it identifies graphics and videos from its database and it creates a video or a graphical presentation. You know, stuff that just blew someone like me off. So I, I just thought I'll, I'll share it with you. And uh, of course, Quill, Articulo, amazing solutions. Uh, basically, it's, it's literally like a person writing content for you. So all you have to do, give it, uh, all you have to do is give it the, the, the specific information 
just keywords and of course what type of uh, what what type of uh, and, and it will basically generate the content that you're looking for and of course it will generate content in so many different ways angled at your product as your business at, at your audience and so on and so forth so these are just just a literally basically a snapshot of the kind of solutions which are out there if you really want to play around with AI and uh, see how it could help you with your content creation, especially with the text content. So um, apart from that, you get you get AI, which is uh, helping a lot of content and, and uh, creators and marketers and, and bloggers and so on and so forth with the analytics side of it, such as co-schedule, buzz sumo, which I'm pretty sure a few of you have heard about. And uh, yeah, and uh, of course, next, uh, very soon we'll also be uh, talking a bit about how to take uh, this specific content and, and take it into a much more virtual space, talking about virtual reality and augmented reality. So here are some really cool uh, uh, solutions. Of course, everybody who works with AR or VR knows about Blender. Um, it's, it's an open source platform and it's, well, it, it is, uh, hopefully it will stay open source, uh, free to use. So anyone here who wants to really take their game one notch, you can really, really go into this space and start creating really cool graphics in, in virtual reality, 3D graphics. Uh, and and, and uh, basically it's, it's amazing how easy it is to create these uh, graphics and so on and so forth. So without ado, uh, I would like to bring in our next presenter, but then um, I would like to know, are there any questions from the audience up to now? Because there's a lot of information that, that uh, so please, if you do have any questions, I, I, I suggest that you send it uh, to us on the um, code that I showed you, which unfortunately I don't have right now, but I'll, I'll put it on uh, again because uh, there's a lot of content that we're sharing today at this uh, event. So I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who really would like to know more about what we're talking about. Jamie is there. Uh, Johan is of course not there with us. Uh, he left, but uh, of course, if you want to speak, uh, with this, uh, there are other people from Sopra Stereo who are around. So uh, before we proceed further, I would like to invite you to join us um, uh, for all these uh, fancy toys which are around and just experience it a little bit. And uh, how would you like to have your break? Would you like to have your break now or should we have it later on? Is this, uh, is this too much fun to... Uh... Who would like to have a break now? Okay, so it seems like almost everyone just wants to keep going. Cool. So next online, we have uh, Lynn, who's going to give you a uh, rundown about Content marketing. Lynn, uh, of course, has been working for a large organization which works with content marketing, and uh, now she's on. Uh, she has her own organization. It's called Text Me. It's uh, Norway's leading content marketing, uh, uh, or, or rather, uh, yeah, content marketing organization. So, ladies and gentlemen, Lynn. Please. Speak. for that uh, lovely introduction. It's uh, Norway's leading WordPress content marketing agency. That's an uh, important detail there. Um, but uh, yes, uh, in fact, I uh, have created a uh, content marketing agency for businesses with the emphasis on actually many different types of text-related work, including content for your business blog. And this is the feature that I will explain more in this presentation. Yeah, all right. Actually, we can um, go to slide number two, please. Is, am I gonna press yeah. this myself? Okay, perfect. Okay, <clears throat> so, um, well, if you would like to know a little bit more about me and what I have done previously, then uh, these are my social media contact details. And uh, I'm in all the social media platforms, including Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And I'm also on Goodreads. And uh, here, I have also included the, the SoMe contacts for my company. That's uh, Text Me, 
where I am now the CEO, owner, and founder, and uh, that is if you would like to follow me there too, or us there. Okay, uh, wait a minute, I get a little bit confused here. Um, so, uh, today I actually, I want to talk about digital storytelling and how can you do digital storytelling in an ever-changing digital environment, you might ask. Uh, but with the uh, emphasis on the value of content and with our company and our company's story storytelling, I want to show you what content marketing and digital present can do to your advantage. Because we're all digital storytellers every day, both as personal consumers and as businesses. And uh, this is an uh, ever-changing digital environment. And hopefully this environment will always be uh, exciting. And uh, I know that I will do my part in contributing to this excitement as long as I am a part of our company. Text me, we tell our story in Instagram every day. We tell it in our monthly newsletter with uh, monthly updates there. And we tell it in Facebook with updates there. And last but not least, we tell it in our business blog. And this is when I come to actually this slide. <laughs> because I have to correct myself a little bit there on the business blog. Because we don't actually tell that many stories in our business blog. There is a huge difference between what we tell and upload in our business blog and what we share in all of our other social media channels. And that is because our business blog has one purpose only and that is to sell. That is to sell us as a marketing agency with highly skilled tax consultants and our uniqueness as an agency in order to attract and uh, connect with potential customers and leads. And that doesn't have that much to do with storytelling. It has to do with sales. Now, and as I'm sure there are many here uh, that are aware of this, but uh, in the sales process, there are three steps that you need to take into consideration. And those steps are, first, it's the attract phase, second, it's the persuasive phase, and at last, it's the closing phase. Now, in the inbound methodology that we are working after, this can actually be translated into tofu, mofu, and bofu. And uh, to uh, sum that up really quickly, uh, it's attracting is tofu, uh, pursue is mofu, and, uh, and close is bofu. And another little, um, Tight note there. When I first heard these terms, I thought for myself, this must be something weird. Uh, Toad got from Super Mario in a strange bonus material world. But uh, no, it uh, has a logical explanation, and you can see it here. It's short for top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, and bottom of the funnel. So this all has to do with attracting on the top, pursuing in the middle, and closing in the end. And I'm not going to go into more detail about this here, uh, but if you want the details, I, well, we, it happens that we have written a really great article that goes into detail on how you're planning your content in relation to this, and uh, I will be happy to send that to you afterwards, if you're interested. And uh, another thing, can you see what I just did now? And can you see how you can use that same method 
in your sales department. Um, because when you have your first interaction with a customer, you can't have too many details. But then you're going to uh, lose their attention. So in the first interaction with the customer, you want to grab their attention first. And then you want to have the underlying facts, facts. And then you can say, just as I did now, you can say, uh, well, you know what? If, uh, if you're interested in learning more about this, we have a really long ebook guide that's telling you everything that you need to know, also with the clickable elements that will take you to a video of how to do it, step-by-step -step guide, and uh, that I will be happy to send to you. And uh, once you've read it and you have some more questions, then uh, please come back to me and I'll uh, answer everything you need to know. And if you get uh, a yes, then, well, then you have to get their email address, right? So, and then you have your first contact ready to be nurtured. <coughs> So our business blog is definitely not for fun and happiness. It has one purpose, and that is to be informative so that our sales department can use that when contacting potential new customers and leads. And there is another very brilliant person that has lived in this world that actually had some really cool theories about this that's related directly to this. And uh, this is the guy, Aristoteles. And I'm sure uh, all of you here have heard about Aristoteles. And uh, because he is the founder of many different theories in many different fields, uh, but uh, including that he, he wrote the first communication theories that we're still using today. And uh, it happens that I had that book that he wrote that in, in my shelf at home. So I brought it with me. And uh, if you wonder why I have that, well, it's because I have a master's degree in rhetoric and strategic communication from the University of Oslo. University of Oslo, thank you very much. So uh, what he said is that uh, you actually need three things in combination, and that's crucial, in order to pursue someone. And that's Ethos, Logos, Pathos. Now, our business blog is equivalent with Aristoteles' Logos. You need all the other, uh, the other parts as well, but our business blog has the facts that you need, as I've explained uh, earlier. And uh, <clears throat> if you... Uh, when you use that, that's a very effective uh, tool, as I've said. So, but obviously, um, you, that's, that's not enough. You need something more than that, okay? So you don't buy from someone standing there very unenthusiastic, telling, uh, hi, do you want to buy my product? It's super cool and I'm going to give you lots of detailed facts about it so that you will buy it now. No, that's not how it works. Uh, but you buy from someone that's talking, engaged about what they're doing and also through that is showing their knowledge of what they're doing. And lastly, you're buying from someone that is telling how amazing the people that is going to deliver this are. So you might wonder, because I said that our business blog does not have anything to do with storytelling. So where do we do our digital storytelling? Because we do that as well. And some of you might think, well, but selling, it has to do with storytelling, doesn't it, right? Yes, it does, because you have to have the combination. So what we emphasize in our social media channels, that's our people. And that's what we love, and that's everything that's engaging and happy and funny and cool. And that's what we share in Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and all over where we are. And on that note, I want to give you a little bit of an example. Yeah, here I was going to emphasize that uh, our business plugin is not for fun and happiness. It's for selling. <clears throat> 
Okay, I want you to meet uh, Vigdis. <clears throat> she is a digital text consultant in TextMe. And she has actually created amazingly in one of the latest projects that we've had. We've worked with the Ibsen Museum in Grimsta, where we as an agency has delivered uh, their entire storyline for the new opening exhibition that's opening this summer, where we're telling the story of the 15-year-old Henrik Ibsen that uh, came to Grimsta for the first time and actually rebelled against some of the established environment there and teased some of the prominent people there. And uh, this is also where he got his first true long-lasting friends and also when he first wrote, uh, wrote his first published play, Catalina. This is a story that we have been contributing and creating and my consultant Vigdis has been absolutely amazing in that process. She has read over 50 books about Ibsen's life and work in Grimsta and we've written the manuscript that the museum's guides are relating to when they do their tours together and I can just honestly say that we would not have been able to do this if it wasn't for her. That's what we share in our social media channels. And uh, recently, I uh, have had to recruit another text consultant. So this is Yana, and uh, she actually works part-time at NTNU, that's the abbreviation for the Norwegian University of Science and Technology in Trondheim, where she has been responsible for the uh, research group's media strategy on uh, reaching out with their science to the public. And where they have, as one of the first universities in the country, used blogging as a tool for this. Now, we're gonna use her expertise with science and communication and blogging to attract similar institutions in our region. For example, the University of Agder. And that's what we share in our social media channels. And uh, lastly, I want you to meet uh, Bert Harrell. He is the main graphic designer in TextMe. And uh, he has a unique ability to transfer something uh, not visual and very boring textual into a popping, wonderful design. He's doing all of our ebook covers and also the inside of the ebooks that we're creating in TextMe. But uh, recently I've actually had to, uh, there's an onboarding graphic designer coming in actually to take some of the, the tasks. But uh, Brent Harrell has contributed to some of the first projects that we've had. And I can honestly say that we would not have been able actually to start up this with if it wasn't for him. And uh, that's what we share in our social media channels. And on a little note on that, um, Bert Harrell is a wonderful introverted person that likes it best in the shadows. So up until this date, I haven't actually been able to take a photo of him. Um, so we use his work instead. But uh, I hope that I will get the opportunity to capture him in the lens when we, in just one week from now, are having our one year anniversary in summer party event uh, in Grimsta. And that's on board of the sailboat Solrik, sunny side in English. And uh, this is truly Grimsta's pride, this boat. And uh, we are really looking forward to uh, invite all of our local customers and also our Oslo customers and collaborational partners down there to our region to see all the wonderful things that our region has to offer. And, um, yeah. Okay, uh, so that's why I am standing here today. I am thrilled in experimenting more about the new ways of communicating stories through new technologies.
technology online. And, and uh, I'm just going to show you some paper clips about uh, that, because uh, as we were all, we have been presented here earlier, you have the VR techno techno technology that's rising more and more, and you have actually also artificial intelligence in writing, where you can have a robot actually writing the articles for you. And for us, with our logos approach to business blogging, that's that's great. We're welcoming that. So, <clears throat> yeah, here I have some newspapers showing us. And uh, personally, I have uh, experimented with podcasting recently. That's a podcast 3040, if you want to check that. And uh, I find that very amusing. And uh, what we also do uh, in TextMe is that we supplement our overall textual strategy with uh, video uh, marketing. We don't have standalone video marketing. We supplement our overall ebooks, for example. So, in just uh, a week from now, we're having a MailChimp guide, an ebook that we're releasing which will uh, explain everything that you need to know about the MailChimp universe, how to create lists and how to create landing pages in, in uh, MailChimp. And uh, then we're going to have this video included there as a clickable element. And uh, now I thought that I was going to uh, play just a few sections, but not the entire one. I'm just going to play it from the beginning. Just, just to show you a little example, this is a how-to guide. This is how to make a landing page in Mailchimp. I think you have to activate the media stuff. I, did, I had to do that once when I did it uh, as a run through. <laughs> because <clears throat> Actually. Yeah. Okay, I can send that to you as well, that's okay. <laughs> or you can, uh, actually, this is kind of cool, this video. <clears throat> but I think you need to go all the way out and then activate the media. Doesn't, well, you know what, I'll, I'll just continue. You can, uh, everyone can just uh, go to our YouTube channel uh, or to our Facebook channel. We're going to publish it there uh, when we publish the ebook guide. Or even better, you can sign up for our monthly newsletter and you will get it there. It's no problem. <clears throat> Um, I don't know. 
you, you need um, in tofu, and you you can see that in the in the article that I've written. You need more general uh, articles talking about the topic that you're in. For instance, I could write an article about content marketing. What is content marketing? That would be a tofu article. But if I wrote an article in the Bofu, we would say, this is how TextMe is creating content marketing for your business. So, uh, but yeah, but it doesn't have any time, anything to do with time. Uh, you can have long and short articles in both uh, fields, like in, in all the three steps. It doesn't, uh, and you can have, but you need, you need more TOEFL articles than BOFU articles. Because the BOFU articles are too, too selling. But what people are often <clears throat> doing wrong is that they start with the BOFU and they only have the BOFU. And uh, they don't have the top, because on the top level, you don't mention yourself as a company at all. So, but that's actually explained in the article. <laughs> and I want you to read that. And I want you to contact me so that I can get your email address. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But I, I am uh, I'm happy to explain. Yeah, okay. So, I uh, will just uh, end. We're, we're coming towards the middle uh, and ending of this presentation, but before I close, I want to just briefly show you our persona profiles. Because all of this that I've been talking about now is, uh, is very uh, important if you want to do, uh, do a new media uh, strategy or a me media, um, if you want to use new media technology and start a podcast or a webinar, you need to have a strategy. And uh, that's why we create persona pro workshops, both standalone and also as a part of our blogging packages in TextMe. Um, <clears throat> because, and on this note, I also want to say as a little bit of a counterpart to all the amazing people in this room, myself included, that wants to think new in uh, in this field of marketing. If you don't know what to say, you can't know how to say it best. Okay, so this means that if you want to have something new for your company, you need to sit down and actually think strategically. You need to ask yourself, what do I want to say? Uh, why do I want to say it? And lastly, to whom do I want to aim with this message? And uh, this is where the persona profiles uh, come into play. Because we in TextMe, we arrange this, and uh, what we do then is that we uh, sit down with you as a customer and we uh, uh, ask you lots of detailed questions about your customer or your ideal customer, and we put that, all that into an Excel sheet that could be some, uh, where they are in social media, what title they have, and what they're doing on their daily basis. And then we sum all of these details up <coughs> to a persona profile. And in TextMe, this looks like this. It, can ha it has different appearances. Um, and um, what we do then, when it's gone one year, is that we actually go back and we actually do actual interviews with existing customers and checking if the accusations that we had one year before is right. And this is actually really, really valuable. And we in TextMe actually just did that ourselves. And uh, the insights that we got from that was blowing, uh, blown away, actually. Uh, I was blown away by it. And I'm going to give you an example. We, in TextMe, we have all of our events in Facebook. And then we asked one of our existing customers, um, are you checking for events in Facebook? And she was like, no, I don't, I'm not even on Facebook. I read the papers. And we were like, oh my god, we're using a lot of energy and effort and money to promote our events in Facebook when our customers is not even there. 
I mean, that's some insight for me. So on that uh, notion, we, uh, we wanted to, to uh, think differently with that insight. And uh, so what we're doing now is that we're still going to be in Facebook because that's an important branding channel for us and uh, also for our events. But with upcoming events, we're now going to go more targeting towards local papers in our region and we're going to see them as an important marketing channel for our upcoming events. Because we actually have two upcoming events. One of them is the summer event, uh, one year anniversary that I already mentioned, where we in the first hour have a meet and greet opportunity for everybody in Grimsa and in our region to come and, and say hi to us. And then we also have a, an event on the 15th of August. Yeah, this is the uh, Where we're... Um, we have actually timed this with the Arndals week, that's the Ar Arndals Uka, which is, for those of you who don't know it, it's a big political festival going on in our region where all the big prominent politicians national-wide are coming down to us to talk about politics, where we in TextMe are going to talk about uh, how you can market your business through ebooks, Instagram, and blogging. And we hope, of course, to attract a lot of attention and possibly new customers through that. Um, because but who we want to attract the most to this event is actually the person that doesn't know about the possibilities that we can offer on the forehand. So we have realized that this person that doesn't have the insight, the education and the knowledge that we have, they're not in Facebook. Or maybe they are in Facebook, but they're not using Facebook to draw their attention towards upcoming events. So that's why we're going to take the initial ad budget that we had for Facebook and put that onto traditional print paper ads in the local um, newspaper instead. And also we're going to use uh, a lot of time and effort to work for, with PR. And uh, that is to try to get actual press coverage on our company. And uh, we actually succeeded in that just uh, this weekend. We had a, a big article in the Grimsta Adressetidn. And that was uh, fun for us. And uh, let me go further. Yeah, you can find, of course, our events in Facebook. Still, if we're... Uh, um, and, you know, I just also want to just say, so that I not forget it, that um, you know, this insight that this persona workshop has given us, you know, it seems so simple to do that shift when you know the facts. But the truth is that we as marketers often are blindfolded with our digital uh, marketing campaigns. But knowledge is power. And of course, that's what we all want. So, closing. Um, I uh, believe that uh, we as marketers can make the mistake of thinking that we have to be so damn modern all the time. And that's what's needed of us most of all. But that doesn't help very much if the customer that you want to reach is not modern or at least they're not modern yet. So I think that we need to help our potential customers over the garage, over the gap, with the bridge, so that they can see all the possible uh, new ways of communicating their stories using new technology. And in that process, I think also they need to hold on to a strategist that can lead the way over the bridge and at the same time can tell them why it's important and how to do the new actions. And uh, few people have been honored for doing the same as someone else. But what we forget, we who honor these people, that is that they sat at home weighing back and forth whether or not if they should dare to do it or not. 
because you don't know if something unproven and unknown will be a success before you have tried. And that's the beauty of marketing, I think. And that's why I am standing here today. I am thrilled with all the new possibilities for communicating and attracting uh, customers online. Because although we're living in a digital, ever-changing environment, I am standing here today because of the value of our content. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ben. Do you still hear me back there? And, um, okay, we're, we're going to go away to uh, amazing Sennheiser speakers, or uh, uh, microphones, wireless microphones, a little later on. But before that, I, I would like to invite you guys for some really nice snacks, uh, and some, of course, water uh, from Profil One, courtesy of, uh, where is Profil One? 